getting ready to fill this cooling system on this Oldsmobile. I'm sorry, it's a Buick, it's not an Oldsmobile. After we got the coolant put back in there, see we had to replace this belt tensioner. And the belt tensioner was out of line before and it was squealing and all that. So we put a belt tensioner on it, we put a new belt on it. Got everything all put back together. We had to drain the cooling system on this one to put the belt tensioner on it because the coolant travels through the belt tensioner on this 3.8 liter to 98 model. There were several year models that did this. Now down in the radiator, you can actually see we've got some coolant down in there, but we're not all the way up to the top. But we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna fill this up as full as we can get it, which is making a mess. But we have a mop for a reason. All right, you see that? We gotta fill this as full as we can get it. And we got a little dab of air in there. We need to fill it up just a little more if I can do it without making a terrible mess. I used to use one of these gas, one of these cans like this, spout cans when I worked at the gas station back in the 70s. All right, now you notice this hose here goes over here. And it can drink coolant out of here like a straw. We've got a cap. We've got a cap that we have doctored. We've taken all this off of this cap that we're going to use for a tool, and I painted it. I mean, we took that cap, an old cap like that. You don't want to see any of these with this dangling on there. Some of them come like that new, and I don't like that. I won't, I won't ever accept one if that's dangling. That little vacuum valve is basically supposed to let the coolant go back in here from the jug. This is lifted off of its seat by the pressure that's in the radiator. And this is, notice is rated at 16 pounds, and it pushes the coolant into this tank. All right, whenever it pushes the coolant into that tank, you see it is here, and the coolant contracts after it cools off, and whatever will push into the tank, it can pull this little valve open and drink it back out of there. That's why this little valve doesn't need to be dangling and swinging and all that stuff, and that's a brand new cap right there. Now this one right here, like I say, the only place it's going to get any seal is around the top. So it's going to let everything come and go as it wants to. Now this is a tool, they're not going to leave us on there permanently, but it is going to enable us to make sure that the cooling system is full. We've got to pay attention to what's in here because it's going to be using, it's going to be pushing air in here and it's going to be drinking coolant back out of here. All right, so I'm going to put that on there just like the regular radiator cap would go. And like I say, the only place it's sealing is around the top. So it'll have a free flow through this little surge tank hose. And we'll start it up. No squeaky bell! The belt is no longer squeaking, it was earlier, but it's not now. And you also might notice that I'm going to take my little flashlight and you see down there. That belt pretty well lined up. It's not out of line like it was. I'm still seeing a little bit of a deflection there, which I don't like that. At any rate, they gave us a free tensioner. But uh, I'm not sure I like the quality of that one either. I'm not going to say what the brand name is of it, but these tensioners right here have disappointed me for a long time. Anyway, so now we're going to let this warm up a while. we got to pay attention to this bottle here, keep it full, but whenever the coolant starts going back and forth as the fan kicks off and on, the thermostat's open, then we'll know that we're full of coolant, and all we have to do is take this cap back off and make sure it's full. Now the cool thing about that is since there's no pressure build up in there with this cap on there, then when you take one of these off and you're not sure about what's going on, it pushes coolant out and makes a big mess and sometimes you know if you're not careful it can get on you and it's hot and all that. So right now we're going to let this warm up a little bit and whenever it gets to where it's circulating good, we'll shoot a little more. Now we're keeping this can of coolant mix on hand with a 50-50 mix. So that when this starts drinking coolant out of here, we'll be able to keep that full. The key to this is not letting this go empty while this is coming and going. See, whenever the thermostat opens, if there's any air passage in the block, it'll cause the coolant level to go down really fast. In this particular case, it can't get anything anywhere except out of here, and it will start using the coolant that's in this jug. 
So any air that it wants to push out and get rid of, it will push it and it forces it to push it into this jug as well. So as the engine warms up, we watch this really close and we'll be ready to we replenish this as this begins to use the coolant out of it. Our upper radiator hose warming up pretty good. Our cooling fan hasn't kicked on yet. We're monitoring our coolant bottle level pretty close. We've still got plenty of orange coolant in there. Haven't used any. Something else we can tell too, if we start filling this hose here, we can tell whenever there's hot coolant coming and going. Because it goes right all the way to this jug into the bottom of it. And our belch is working nicely. No squealing going on there. All right, and so as it warms up, we'll keep our eye on what, this out right here will be good and warm and there may be a little steam there whenever it's right. Okay, we got fan operation. I've got our wireless vehicle interface hooked up. We got 212 showing on the computer over there. We've got good coolant level in there. And if the fan comes on and goes off, it typically means everything's okay. All right. See, actually, when the fan kicked on, it went back down to 205. Still got our red cap on there. I can feel the warm air coming out of the radiator. Looks pretty good. So we've got good circulation all the way through. Now the cool thing about this is, when you pull this cap off, see we've actually used a little dab out of there. To pull this cap off, we've got no pressure. If you don't have any pressure, you don't have to worry about getting burned. Our coolant level is right where it's supposed to be. We take our new radiator cap and we put it on there. And we let it start building pressure now, and it's good to go. So that's how, if you ordinary, if you do it the ordinary way, it makes a big mess on the floor. So that's how I use the homemade tool radiator cap to make it easier to bleed the coolant.